Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Nancy. Um, it was a lovely, lovely presentation, Nancy. Really enjoyed it and very informative. Learned a lot from it. Thank you. Um, we are supposed to be, be talking about one painting, but uh, you know, as quite rightly, in order to talk about one painting, one needs to talk about more than one. So uh, this is the painting that I started out with. Uh, it's called Father's Story. And, uh, and then I found that in order to really understand it, I need to talk about a couple of others. Uh, I think that what drew me uh, to this painting, uh, you know, I mean, I could have chosen several others, you know. And this exhibition is so magnificent and so rich uh, that, um, I mean, you know, 10, 10, 15 others, you know, I could have taken any one of them and, and, and wanted to talk about them. Uh, but there's spe some specific things here which are, uh, uh, which, which kind of arouse, arouse my interest, my curiosity, uh, and so I'll point out some of those things to you. Uh, the, the setting is very clear, you know, there's kind of a railway station and there are these two, two figures sitting there, they're having a conversation and there's a small town in the background. Um, there's a family resemblance between the two. What, what struck me is the complete lack of idealization in the depiction of these two figures. And so my presentation today is about the opposite. It is about the artist's uh, inclination to idealize and what that means in, in, in connection with a work like this. Uh, I think I'd like you to look at the physicality of the two figures. You know, uh, I, I don't think that there's uh, this, uh, it, it appears as though the artist had consciously uh, wanted to point out to you every frailty of the flesh in this elderly man and the aging son. You know, uh, the neck uh, uh, folds, the bags under the eyes. Uh, the awkwardness of the hands and the feet. Uh, I, I, I think they're absolutely brilliantly portrayed. And, um, and, and again, the, the expressions on the faces, you know, of uh, awkwardness, or of having come to at a, a, a moment of meeting where both the figures almost could be wanting to run away from each other. But uh, because of a happy moment, uh, just the opposite is happening, which is uh, that, that they've come together. Uh, the father is saying something about his life uh, which he wouldn't normally be talking about. It's just that this particular moment has allowed him to talk about this painful, embarrassing, maybe absurd uh, uh, um, moment of his aspirations or of his life. Maybe a family story, uh, maybe a deeply personal uh, revelation. And the son looks embarrassed and yet touched and honored even that his father has finally opened up uh, and that a real moment of communion has been possible. So uh, this could have been achieved only because of the mercilessness uh, of the painter's eye, you know. It's because of the total awkwardness of the aging human animal uh, uh, that 
they have been permitted to to they have been given this brief moment of uh, almost a kind of a sacred communion uh, Now, I talked about the impulse to idealize. And I'll talk about that in connection with the next painting, which to my mind is equally beautiful, but in a completely different direction. May I have the next image, please? This painting is called uh, Construction Worker Washing Her Face. It's a very clean construction worker. There's no dust on the headdress, there's no dust on the fingers. Uh, uh, the nails are absolutely clean. The face is clear. She might as well not be washing her face. She doesn't need to be washing. Uh, in fact, the gesture uh, is intentionally misleading. Or rather, the title is intentionally misleading. She's not washing her face. She's doing something else. And that is mysterious. We don't know, you know. And the painter gives us no clues, no indications. You know? This painting is, is, in a certain kind of way, a diametrically opposite kind of creation to the previous work. It is a totally idealized work. Had the pair picture uh, been, been uh, of the nature of the earlier work. You'd have seen more folds of skin. You'd have seen the stress uh, of uh, the construction worker's life. You'd have seen grime and dust. You'd have seen cracked fingernails. You'd have seen the headdress soiled. You'd have seen sweat. All of these have been edited out. And it's such a dramatic decision to have taken you know, for an artist. And one wonders, almost one wonders, did, did Sudhir Patwadhan begin this painting by telling himself, I will now portray an idealized construction worker uh, with uh, ambiguous uh, 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 connotations to the painting, uh, and then proceed to do that? I rather doubt it. I think he just started a work and then allowed the work to take him where the work would lead. And the work led to a dimension which was diametrically opposite to that of the uh, earlier slide. Uh, this is incidentally a much earlier work than, uh, than Father's uh, story. But that doesn't matter, you know. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, that doesn't matter, thank you. Uh, it doesn't matter that it is a much earlier work. Uh, I think that between these two works, uh, we are seeing a, a scale uh, of dimensions uh, uh, where uh, different kinds of ways in which painters will confront reality. And um, these two distinct points is one of great uh, idealization and one of what is, I mean, I can't find a word for it. To say realism uh, seems to imply that an idealized work is not realistic, which is not the case. Uh, can you supply a word? Uh, uh, I would, what would I say? Uh, non, well, simple, simply a non-idealized work. So uh, let me give you a couple of examples from art history as well, you know, because that's very interesting. Um, uh, say the figure of the dead or dying Christ, you know, which has been uh, painted again and again in so many different references, you know, and ways. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, uh, a figure like uh, a painter like Roger van der Weyden, and um, if you see the descent of the the cr uh, uh, from the cross, 
that is the dead Christ has been brought down from the cross. And you see the way that the figure of this Christ has been painted. There is no spattering of blood. There is no sweat. There is no dirt. There is no wrinkles. There is no sign of suffering except for the shut eyes and maybe a little strain around the mouth. It, the, the suffering, the, the, let's say the, the stress of the suffering has been cleaned out. And yet, it is a deeply, deeply moving work. You know? Almost because of the cleaning out, you know, it is almost as though the paint, painter was saying that uh, the divinity of this death can be portrayed only in this way. On the other hand, look at uh, Grunewald's crucified Christ. You know, uh, Van der Weyden comes from the lower, from the Netherlands. Uh, Grunewald comes from Alsace, which is between uh, France and uh, Germany. Uh, the centuries are more or less the same. And yet, I think, I think in the 13th, 14th century, you know, and yet diametrically opposite uh, uh, notions of how to portray a dead body or a dying body of a, of a, great, of a great prophet, of, a, of, of the son of God, in fact, you know. Grunewald's Christ is pitted with wounds from head to foot. You know, you can literally see where the lashing and the thorns have been in, impaled into his flesh. Uh, his, the, the hands of his, uh, the fingers of his hands are distorted in, in, in signs of extreme suffering. So uh, this kind of non-idealization of, of, of the death of the Son of God is as effective in its own way as the idealized uh, uh, dead Christ. So I, I, today, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm not offering any solutions, or I'm not giving you any definitions, but I'm saying that uh, it, is, it is wonderful to see uh, in Sudhir Patwadhan's work that as with many important painters, his work moves between these two polarities of idealizing and non-idealizing. And I'm going to show you two more examples of this before I, I uh, stop my presentation. <clears throat> yes, please. Now, this is a, a, a scene of a violent murder in public. Uh, and Again, grim as it is, it is an idealized version of a murder. Uh, it is idealized because, for one thing, the confusion of the moment has been controlled, severely controlled, and all, a kind of an almost choreography has been created. So that, you know, it is a kind of like a, like a, a almost a dance movement. Uh, and I think that Nancy also mentions this in her notes uh, downstairs near the, near the painting, which is a you know, wonderful perception. Uh, the idea of a murder and a dance coming together, you know, it's just, it's mind blowing, you know. And, and, and it's only the uh, extreme, uh, artistry of the painter that can pull this off, you know, successfully. Uh, notice again the wound uh, on the shoulder uh, is an idealized wound, you know. There's no bright red blood. There are no drips of blood flowing out, you know. It's uh, almost a kind of a slight indication to the viewer, you know, to what he's looking at. And the next, last uh, slide, please. 
uh, in the contrast, you know, of a non-idealized heap of murdered bodies, you know. Uh, I almost uh, need not say anything. And uh, so, having presented this uh, somewhat narrow, uh, 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 but to my mind, you know, important for me, reading of uh, the polarities between which an artist can work. You know, as a painter, for me also, this polarity is extremely important, and which is what I think led me uh, out of all the wonderful and various uh, things that one could, one could investigate in Sudhir's work, uh, I thought that I would, I would concentrate on this small area. Thank you. Thank you so much, Giv. That was a brilliant presentation. And uh, we will take into account what you said about the tendency in Sudhir's work between idealizing and not idealizing, and the tension between these two poles, and then how that plays out in his work. And uh, I'd now like to invite Ranjit Hoskote. Uh, very warm welcome to you, Ranjit. Uh, Ranjit has written two excellent books on Sudhir Patwardhan, uh, The Complicit Observer and Crafting of Reality. And I think Sudhir has been very fortunate to have uh, had really brilliant writers uh, thinking about his work, reflecting on it, and analyzing it. Ranjit, may I please invite you to make your presentation?